Coming up on this episode of the Curse Step Podcast, I preview Sunday's game between the Falcons and Lions. I'll go over injury reports for both teams and look how they stack up against one another and more. Buckle up, Buttercup. It's time to start the show. Devin, welcome to the Kurt Steele Podcast, your trusted source for Detroit Lions news and rumors. I'm your host, Kurt Steele. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, and share it with fellow Lions fans just like yourself. Follow me on your favorite social media platforms, you know, X, Facebook, and visit my website, KurtSteele.com. Today is Friday, September 22nd, 2023, and shout out to my family over at Lions Nation Unite. Man, the Lions are looking to get back on track Sunday when they face the Dirty Birds of Atlanta when they hit four field. The last time Detroit hosted Atlanta, it was that 10-second runoff game back in 2017. Still have a bad taste on my mouth from that one. Uh, while there are not many Lions left on the roster from that team, the fan base is still looking for revenge. I know I am. But let's look out the injury reports before we get to any of the matchups and tell you who's riding that choo-choo pain train, baby, heading into the game on Sunday. Now, let's look at what's going on with the Lions. All right, Taylor Decker, he did not practice this week at all with an ankle injury. He's been out uh, Wednesday and Thursday for practice. Same with Kirby Joseph uh, with a hip injury. David Montgomery with a thigh injury. Same as well. Emmanuel Mosley still out that had that setback with that hamstring and the knee injury. Frank Ragnar, he practiced on Wednesday, but did not practice on Thursday. But that's kind of a rest day for him. It's usually Friday, but this time they gave him off Thursday. Uh, Big V, uh, he did not practice this week at all with that knee injury. It looks like it's going to be uh, Sewell back at left tackle and then uh, Matt Nelson at right tackle. Josh Reynolds, he was a limited participant. Uh, on Wednesday and Thursday with a groin injury. And Amara St. Brown, he missed practice on Wednesday with a toe injury, but he was back on the field yesterday in a limited capacity. Looks like he should be on point to play on Sunday. Now, the Lions are banged up, man. That Seattle game was rough. So, but Decker, Joseph, and Mosley, I told you they didn't practice, but they were at the facility on Thursday. Decker was working with the trainers on the side, and the other two were there uh, just they didn't have any helmets, so they were not allowed to participate in practice. Dan Campbell mentioned on his presser on Wednesday, excuse me, that with the team playing ten game, ten excuse me, two games in ten days, so you'll have some guys that they're trying to save until the Green Bay matchup next Thursday. So he didn't give any specifics of what players will be sitting out versus Atlanta uh, for the game versus Green Bay next week, but. It will be a player or two that will not play, even if they're good and healthy or kind of like they, they're they about 85% there. They want to hold them until that divisional matchup versus the Green Bay Packers. Now let's look at the Falcons, man. All right. So they have first up on their list, they had Troy Anderson, a linebacker. He was a full participant on Wednesday uh, with a concussion. Uh, he was on a concussion protocol, and he was not listed on their report for Thursday. Calais Campbell, rest day, uh, did not practice on Wednesday, was not listed on their practice report at all on Friday. Excuse me, on Thursday, excuse me, Jeff Okuda. Like he's going to be playing against Detroit. Uh, he was a full participant with a, his foot injury that he suffered uh, earlier in the preseason and the offseason. Like he's going to be a give it a go versus the Lions. Cordell Patterson, he, uh, w- he was not listed on Wednesday, but he – had a setback with a thigh injury on Thursday and did not practice for the Falcons. And Bud Dupree, he was not listed on the practice report on Wednesday and was out on Thursday with an illness. Uh, interesting story about Bud Dupree, man. He went out and played. He played one of the spring leagues, man, but he's back on Atlanta's active roster. Now, Atlanta is coming to Detroit pretty healthy. Uh, Patterson and Dupree are the only guys right now who may miss the game because of the illness. I think they have a ton of weapons 
on the offense in the run game that they can rest Cordell Patterson don't have to rush him back. And with that setback, I think they will keep him off the field versus the Lions. And, you know, but Dupree, he may get into the game, man. You know, he gets over the sniffles. He may play against the Lions on Sunday. And that's who's riding that choo-choo pain train, baby. Look for a minute hang with Kurt on Saturday morning where I give you the game designations that come out uh, tonight at 4 p.m. So it may not be tonight, but I'm going to give it to you tomorrow before um, college football starts so you can get that. Uh, information on who's in and who's out for the Lions and Falcons on Sunday. So the Lions will rely on veteran depth with the amount of injuries they've suffered to some starters, man. Tracy Walker III will be returning to the starting lineup now that CJ Garner Johnson is on IR. Now, Romeo Aquar will be get more play time. He was active last week. But uh, he didn't get a lot of playing time until James Houston went out, man, with that ankle fracture. Whew. And the same goes for the offensive line, man. You look at, I don't think Decker will play this week again, and the Big V is going to be out again. Looks like they, I think they're going to hold those guys out. I think those are some of the guys that are going to hold out into the Green Bay game. Um, like that, that offensive line is going to be that same group that finished the game last week when you're going to have um, Spinay Sue at the left tackle and then you have Jonah Jackson at left guard Frank Ragnow and then you have uh, Graham Glasgow playing the right guard and then Matt Nelson playing the right tackle position and you know they'll give him plenty of help they'll have a, a line excuse me they have a tight end over there chip in backs to go to that side to kind of help Matt Nelson out but those are the guys that I think will be out I think it's going to be Big V Taylor Decker Kirby Joseph I think those guys they're going to hold those guys until the Green Bay game next Thursday for that divisional matchup. After the break, I'll go over some key matchups for the Falcons and Lions and see how they stack up against one another. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and drop me a comment. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Hit the notification bell so you know when you're getting fresh content from me right here on my YouTube channel. And for more Detroit Lions content from me, head over to CurtisSteel.com. You'll find articles uh, links to my articles on Sideline Report and original content right there on the homepage. And please follow me on your favorite social media platforms. Like I said, man, X, Facebook, Instagram. You can find the links right there on my homepage as well. And while you're out there, man, get yourself some Kurt Steel gear. The link for that at the LNU shop is right there on my homepage as well. Y'all see that Regal Lion right there, man. You got Boss Up, Ball Lot shirts. You got What Up, those shirts. All that stuff is right there on the LNU uh, page for Kurt Steel gear. So head over there, support your boy, uh, and all the sales from that content, uh, excuse me, all the sales from that links on that page help me grow the content right here on this channel. Now let's get back into the action, man. The game preview. All right, Falcons have Lions have some team matchups. I'm gonna tell you, it's strength on strength, uh, where the teams rank in the league so far we know it's only week three but let's kind of look at how the lions offense stacks up versus the falcons defense now the lions have the third our third ranked in total offense but guess what the falcons is ranked third in total defense detroit has the fourth ranked passing offense against atlanta's second ranked passing defense the one area that in which the Lions may have an advantage is that the Lions don't have a great running game, but they have the 14th ranked running attack versus Atlanta's 22nd ranked run defense. Ben Johnson is confident. He spoke this week about Jameer Gibbs getting a heavier load. He's confident with him getting a heavier load. Now Montgomery's on the sideline with a thigh injury. Bam Knight is a powerful runner, man. We saw him last year when we played the Jets. The guy can actually, you know, he's a, you know, he's a, Smaller guy, compact. It doesn't weigh a lot, but he's around that 210 uh, frame, And but he's a powerful runner. And we got him on the active roster. We signed him from the practice squad this week. We all know what we did with, for the Jets last year when their top running back went out. So I like the addition of Bam Knight to the running back room. Of course, you're going to have Netflix in there filling in as well. I think it's going to be that one-two punch of Bam, Bam Knight and Jameer Gibbs versus the um, – Versus the Falcons, excuse me, the interior of the offensive line is solid because you look at it, right? Graham Glasgow and Big V were fighting out for that right guard position. 
And I think that the Lions really had six starters on the offensive line. So I'm looking at Jonah Jackson, Frank Ragnow, and Graham Glasgow. I think they could open up some so solid running lanes for whoever's lining up in the backfield. Um, now let's kind of look at some defense, how that Lions defense matches up against this Falcons offense. So the Lions are ranked 22 in total defense. Whew. Better than last year because last year we were 31st. Okay. All right. Well, Atlanta, they don't have a great offense. They were only ranked 14. So it's not too many spots between their, you know, our defense and their offense, right? But here's the big difference. They got the fourth ranked rushing attack going up against a much improved ninth ranked run defense. That's what's getting us up there uh, in the run defense. Both teams, um, excuse me, if you look at this, that's kind of strength on strength, right? Um, I think what's helped the run defense are, is the play of the linebackers. You know, you have uh, Derek Barnes is playing a, playing a lot better this season. He's he's uh, playing the run really solid, getting toward the uh, getting to the the ball carries really fast. He has been much improved, and I think he's helped that run defense. And uh, both teams now rank the at the bottom of the league in this final matchup. Uh, kind of scratching my head on this one, right? So the Falcons, for all their running attack, they kind of got the 28th ranked passing attack, right? We look at this run the last game, man. Uh, I think he went 19 for 35 in passing. <laughs> That's not good at all. Um, they will face Detroit's 26 ranked passing defense. So uh, how we have against like the run where it's strength on strength, where you have the Lions ninth ranked running defense versus the fourth ranked run offense we got the bottom of the barrels and for both teams in the league as far as passing attacks go they got a they got a, a poor passing attack and we got a poor pass defense man but i think what what's going on i think there's some it's going to be some fixes on that in the pass defense this week i think they'll make some adjustments i think the one thing that made the lions pass defense so bad is that the lack of pressure and i think Aaron Glenn need to scheme up some different type of looks. I think they were just going with base defense. They weren't blitzing a lot, um, getting guys off the edge. So I think they will run some more stunts and twists to get some uh, some more pressure on Desmond Ritter. You know, guys are not uh, a great pocket passer. The problem is going to be making sure you account for him in the run game because he is a good runner. And, you know, Detroit has an issue with running quarterback. So that's going to be the matchup that, I look at look at how the teams stack up against one another. It's about strength on strength and weakness on weakness. It'll be a test for both teams on Sunday. The Lions haven't faced a running game like Atlanta's, and the Falcons haven't pay, faced a pass game like the Lions and an efficient quarterback like Jared Goff. I know he had a pick six and the streak ended, but he completed 80% of his passes for Seattle. Uh, I think it will be a hard fought game on Sunday. Won't be a high scoring affair, but I think it will, it will be a a tough sledding uh, in the game on Sunday. Now, Caesar Sportsbook has the Lions at three point favorites against the Falcons at four field. The over under for the game is forty six. I will take the over slightly. I think Detroit will bounce back with a win versus Atlanta in four field, twenty eight to twenty. Hey, let me know what your game prediction is in the comments down below. And I will definitely go over them and make sure I bring them up next time I come on the show um, next week. Now it's time for dessert with your man, Kurt. Sweet bits of news and notes about our favorite team, the Detroit Lions. The Tracy Walker on Wednesday spoke to the media and is ready to hop back into his starting role. Now here's the sweet bits of uh, news about this. In a strange coincidence, the game is a year to the day that he <laughs> tore his Achilles versus Minnesota last year. Remember, it was week three uh, in Minnesota where he tore his Achilles, and he's coming back as a starter right back in the same spot uh, for this game this week versus the, the Atlanta Falcons. You got to remember, man, when people were talking about how big of a loss it was for CJ Gardner Johnson. I think it was a big loss for us because he's that heart and soul. You know, he's kind of been that vocal leader. But Tracy Walker led the team in tackles in 2021, and he was a team captain last year before he went out with that ankle injury. We know what a difference it made when he went out. 
So he, he said he's ready to, to get out there and fly around making some plays. He's going to be his old self uh, and the rest of the season. And that is your dessert with Kurt for 23, excuse me, 22 September, 2023. Thanks for joining me for today's episode of the Curse Step Podcast, your trusted source for Detroit Lions news and rumors. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and drop me a comment. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Man, hit me on the, hit the notification bell so you know we're getting that fresh, fresh right here on my YouTube channel. For more Lions content from me, you can head over to CurseSale.com. You can find links to my articles on Sideline Report and original content right there on the homepage. Do your man Kurt Steele a favor. Whatever you do in life, you got to boss up, ball out, and be the best version of you that you can be. This is Kurt Steele, and I will holla at you real soon.